very lucky to find uh, Scott Drive. This has been the biggest problem that I've had is inverter, the bit that actually makes the electric van go. So the inverter goes between the battery and the motor. Um, tried to do this with an open source inverter but even with help it was uh, beyond me quite frankly. But Scott Drive have been so well brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, asked him way too many questions, very tolerant and he's actually connected via his home to uh, mine through the PC straight into the inverter and help me with settings and get me up and running. Within a week of getting the Scott Drive inverter there were signs of life and within two weeks I was getting it MOT'd. So I'd like to uh, thank Scott Osborne very much for all his help and would highly recommend using his inverter if you're uh, thinking of doing an EV conversion. I think it's worth every single penny. Um, charging. I can now charge um, actually out and about. Tesco's are putting in charge points and they're doing 7 kilowatts mostly free, well those, that one was free um, so that's kind of nice and it's good to know that I can charge whilst I'm out I've only got a 30 kilowatt battery in the van at the moment that's going to be uh, upgraded to a 60 kilowatt battery by adding a second Nissan Leaf battery thought I'd show you a view of the inside of my van. This is the volt amp meter. Uh, it's just charging at the moment. We've got quite a long way to go before it's fully charged. Um, down here we've just got the brake and accelerator pedal and the black pedal up in the corner here. That is for um, disabling regenerative braking. So it's basically got one pedal driving. Either. Now, around the front, currently charging. It's my charge port, needs a bit of tidying up, we're getting there. Now, in here, we have one Scott Drive inverter, and that's how I've been able to get my van going. Previous attempts to over at um, open source inverters have been a complete disaster and uh, yeah pretty much a waste of time so I've got a motorcycle radiator in here for cooling and I've just done 48 miles this morning in one go on a reasonably It's a bit noisy, but it certainly gets the job done. So, under the front. show as well which is all going on as we speak um, battery in here I've just got a couple of uh, fuses for ancillary items like uh, 
power steering or vacuum pumps. The tank, we've already covered that in a previous video, so I won't bore you with that. Main cable is coming from the DC to DC inverter. A bit of tape around that. No, it's all good. So I've done a few hundred miles in it now, and um, I'm really starting to enjoy it. So here we are. Um, this is a power steering uh, cooler. It was on there from standard, so I kept it. It never seems to get very warm. And the power steering pump's there. And again, covered it in other videos, but power steering pump, vacuum pump down there, vacuum tank, two vacuum switches, one. Uh, turns on a latching relay, one breaks the latching relay. Um, so basically it's got the feed feed wires going to the latching relay. This one energizes it and this one pulls the power and then until both until that one is in the um, on position close contact and this one closes contact, then it works. So there's quite a delay between it starting and stopping, so it's not front and pumping. Although that switch did decide to break the other day and it just carried on pumping and pumping and pumping. And um, I burnt myself in the pump when I got home. But uh, I've put a new switch on it, it seems fine. So there we go. Um, Grey box under there has got all the contactors in it. It's not super easy to get to, but once you take off the uh, front panel, a few screws, that just lifts out the way and I can access everything. It's uh, not too bad, but as you see, there's not a great deal of room in the front of one of these. It's quite handy, the front comes off, makes it a lot easier. Right, so in the back of the van, we've got the battery uh, set up in two modules. That's one of them And over the other side we've got the other So you've got 200 volts in one side 200 volts in the other and of course they are uh, linked in series So you've got cell one over here And then it goes all the way till the end cell and then you've got the next first cell and then the last cell Oops, Sorry the last cells over here first cells there so put some stickers on it just to warn people. Obviously there's only 200 volts in each one, but there would be 400 in this one. So um, yeah, got some very protective cables, not actually that thick there. Yeah, they're thick enough, but um, that'll probably be boxed in at some point. Um, or at least matey, you know, people can't sort of, well, hopefully nobody else will be in here, but nobody should uh, come to harm. Uh, so that's one battery. And then the second battery, if I have my way, is going over the wheel arches. Structurally, that's going to be a little bit more of a, a thing, putting it in place. Obviously, this is nice and simple. It's bolts down on the floor and bolts on the ends. Uh, you can't really see that end. But yeah, bolts down on the ends, so it's pretty strong. Not going anywhere. I've also got a little uh, mains inverter in there. And that's some I have in my vans to power printers and charge mobility scooters. Well, I'd like to thank everyone who's been involved in trying to help me, uh, or helping me, building this electric van. Um, most things happened on my own on a basic level, but there were things like software and hardware problems, and I had a lot of help from a few people, and, and I owe them a lot. It's been a bit of an odyssey, but I got there in the end. Uh, perseverance is everything, and if you want to achieve, you just got to keep on keeping on until the job is done. If you've got this far, thanks for watching, 
and uh, if you want information do something in the comments write something and I will do my very best to answer you and uh, hopefully I can be helpful to somebody else thanks again